Hello, everybody. Welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. And today we are continuing our discussion of all the different layers that are in your footprints. But today we're going to be focusing on two types of layers. These are your paste mask layers and your solder mask layers. So we got a great comment slash question from superfan Chromatech. Thanks for the question, Chromatech. We're gonna address your question about paste mask and solder mask in this video, and we're gonna show you some cool examples of what you can and should do with paste mask and solder mask openings in your PCB footprints. Make sure to hop into All Team Designer and follow along, and let's get started. So before we get started looking at some footprints, let's take a look at that viewer question. Superfan Chromatech writes, Zach, I was looking forward to this video, but was a bit disappointed. Probably too much to cover in a short video. Not enough information on paste masks or linking the component layers to the PCB layers. And please don't ask your fabricator to sort out your design. Otherwise you will need a new fabricator pretty soon. Looking forward to part two. Well, you wanted part two, you got part two. So here we go. Let's take a look at paste masks and solder masks in PCB footprints. So I'm here inside of our power amplifier module project in Altium Designer. You can see here very clearly that all of the solder mask openings are visible in these footprints. And you can see here the paste mask defined for these components. Where are all of these pieces of information defined? Well, it all starts in a footprint. So inside of a PCB footprint for a through hole component and for a surface mount component, you will have solder mask layers and you will have paste mask layers. So the solder mask layers and the paste mask layers both define two things. First, the solder mask layer defines an opening in the solder mask where solder will be applied and then the component will be mounted to the PCB. And so you can see that I have this selected here for this through hole component. So this header has a solder mask opening set by default around this hole where you will then mount the component in the PCB. In this capacitor, this surface mount capacitor is a 0402 cap. You can see here that the top solder is also defined around the pads for a, this component so that it can mount to the PCB. And you can see here that by default, the solder mask, top solder, is overlapping with the pad perfectly. So the two basically have the exact same size. So whenever I define a pad inside of a footprint, you will see here in the properties panel that you have an option here in the bottom region for a solder mask expansion and for a paste mask expansion. The solder mask defines the opening where you will uh, mount the component and expose the copper on the surface layer. The paste mask shows where solder paste is applied for these surface mount components. Now you'll notice here that for a through hole component, if I have the paste layer selected and I turn on single layer mode, you don't see anything. That's because these components don't have a definition for paste mask because they're generally not going to be put through reflow. Now you can put them through reflow, but generally that's not the case. Um, they could then instead be put through wave soldering. So let's jump back over to the surface mount component just for a moment. Now you can see here that the paste mask opening and the top solder opening, as we saw earlier, are both defined here in the properties panel. And there are some default settings which use the rule option and you can set a manual setting for the openings. Now, by default, if I were to just place a pad here in the top copper layer and I were to then select it and look what's going on in the properties panel, I would see two things happening by default. First, the top paste layer is going to be defined automatically to the same size as my copper. So you can see that here very clearly in single layer mode. So here, this central uh, circle is my paste mask, and then the top layer is my copper, and they're defined to be the exact same size. Now, the top solder is different. By default, the footprint includes a solder mask expansion that's automatically set here in the properties panel. So again, if I just go back to the copper layer and I turn off single layer mode, you can see this purple region around the copper pad that is my solder mask expansion. So you can change this in the properties panel if you want to. I can set this to manual and I can set this to basically whatever value I want. I could set this to a thousand, I could set it to zero. If I set this to zero 
it's going to apply a solder mask opening that exactly matches this pad. So that solder mask opening needs to be defined here in the PCB footprint. But I think what most people will do is just use the default setting, which is just fine for most surface mount components. We'll look at some instances where you actually do want to engineer a paste mask or a solder mask opening specifically for a component footprint. But for most components that are surface mounted, you can just use the default setting because this is going to get overridden in the PCB design rules, as we'll see here in just a moment. Now, if I set this to manual and I apply an expansion, what I could actually do is apply a negative solder mask expansion. So let's say I set this to negative two mils. Well, if I set this to negative two mils and I turn off single layer mode and I just go over to the solder mask layer, you can see here that by setting this to negative two mils, I've only set my solder mask opening to be this very small opening. So this would be the case where you wanna have a solder mask defined pad. And having a very small opening to define the exposed copper is something that you might use in, for example, a BGA footprint. BGA footprints make copious use of negative solder mask expansion in order to apply a solder mask versus non-solder mask defined pad. So what we have here is a solder mask defined pad. So now, what happens when I take one of these footprints and I put it into a PCB layout? What happens to my solder mask openings and my paste mask? Well, what happens is going to depend on the design rules that you have set in your PCB layout. So just as an example, what I've done here is I've gone back into my power uh, amplifier module project. And then you can see here on this inductor that I have the paste mask visible for the top layer. And if I select this pad, you can see here that these paste mask expansion and solder mask expansion options exist in the properties panel. And what I can do here in the properties panel is I can select rule or manual, and this can override whatever I have set in the footprint. The footprint, can, again, is general purpose, could be used for any design, but I can modify that and specify it just for this design using the settings here in the properties panel. So I can manually set my paste mask expansion or a negative expansion, for example. So for my paste mask, I could put negative uh, 0.1 millimeters. So that would be negative four mils. And you can see here that the paste mask opening shrinks just a little bit. Now, if I select this pad and I select rule under paste mask expansion, the paste mask is going to follow whatever setting I have in the design rules for this particular project. So again, you have the option. You can set to a specific rule that is specific to your project or you can set a manual value here for the paste mask. Same thing goes for the solder mask expansion. Suppose, for example, that I have a specific design rule covering solder mask expansion and I want to apply it to this pad. I can do that, I just click rule, and whatever rule has highest priority that applies to this pad is going to apply now based on this setting to rule in the properties panel. Or I can set it to manual. And whatever value I enter in here under manual solder mask expansion, that's going to override whatever I have set up inside of the footprints library. So be careful if you do these manual overrides because as soon as you update this footprint from the library, it's going to undo whatever manual override you've set. So just be mindful of that because if you do a footprint update and then you see all of your solder mask and paste mask openings change, even though you didn't modify that footprint directly, what may have happened is it overrode your settings that you have here in the properties panel. Now I mentioned with this rule setting that this is going to apply whatever is the highest priority in the design rules. So let's take a look at those design rules. So here in the design rules, there are two options under the mask section of the design rules editor. So you can see here, I have a solder mask expansion rule and I have a paste mask expansion rule. So just to uh, show an example of what you can do, let's duplicate this solder mask expansion rule and let's apply a solder mask expansion rule to a specific footprint. So one of the cool things about the query system in Altium Designer is that I can apply design rules to specific footprints, I can apply it to footprints on specific layers, I can do it to specific footprints with a custom query. 
with the footprint option, I can then scroll through here and select the footprint name that matches one of the entries in my PCB libraries. So let's apply it to the SMA connector just as an example. So here, because this option has highest priority, what I could do is I could apply a solder mask expansion of, let's say, one millimeter around the pads on my SMA footprint. And then the second highest priority is going to be tented, and that's going to apply specifically to vias here, as you can see in this image. So once I apply this rule and hit OK, if I just zoom out and then I go over to this uh, SMA component, you're going to see here that it didn't apply a solder mask expansion, even though I set it up in the rule. Well, that's because if you look here in the properties panel, I've set this to manual. It's not following the rule. So if I just click rule here, now you can see that solder mask expansion suddenly appeared around this pad. And if I go into 3D, now you can see very clearly that we have a really big solder mask expansion around this pad just through that rule setting. So the rule setting is really powerful because it allows you to specifically target different components, component classes, different footprints, pretty much anything you want and override if you need to, whatever information is in your PCB libraries. Now, the next point to note is how this works with layer pairs. Now, this goes back to the original question that spawned all of this. What happens with layer pairs? Remember, with SMD components and with pads, you generally don't have layer pairs, which means that this solder mask expansion and the paste mask expansion only gets applied on the layer where the pad appears. So in this case, it's all on the top layer, as you can see here. So I only have top layer copper. That means I'm only going to automatically have top layer paste and then top layer solder. Now, if we just go back to the through hole header for just a moment, if I look at this through hole header in single layer mode, you can see here that if I go to top solder and bottom solder, these are both created automatically based on that rule setting. So the default rule is what is applying here for these through holes. And these through holes are both going to have that top solder clearance and that bottom solder clearance applied automatically. Now, if I select this pad, you can see here that I have an option for top and bottom and they can be linked. So again, they're automatically created this way in the PCB footprint, but once I take this and put it into the PCB layout, my design rule setting can apply to the top and bottom layers individually for these through hole components, specifically for the solder mask. So I have the power to edit both the top layer and the bottom layer. I can make them the same or I can make them different. And that all happens in the PCB layout. So far, we've been looking at pads that only need to have automatically applied or manually adjusted values for the paste mask and solder mask. But what about some instances where you need to engineer a specific solder mask opening or a paste mask opening? So there are some examples where you would need to do this. And one particular example is found on QFN components. So if you take a look at this QFN footprint for uh, our power amplifier here. If you take a look at this and you put it into the top solder layer, you can see that the solder mask opening applies to the entirety of this pad on the bottom of the integrated circuit. However, the paste mask is quite a bit smaller. So there's already a paste mask negative expansion on this pad. A better way to actually do this type of uh, footprint would probably be to just apply openings between the regions where you would have these vias. That way you wouldn't have to worry about tenting those vias or filling and capping those vias in order to prevent solder from flowing onto the back side of the board. Now for this particular board, it's not so important because if I flip this to the back side, you can see that there's really nothing back here that is in danger of getting shorted if some solder flows through these vias and to the back side of the board. So it's not super critical for this example. However, in general, it is often a good idea to have a specifically drawn out solder mask or paste mask opening for these types of components. So let's take a look at an example where you may need to have a very specific type of solder mask or paste mask opening for the component footprint. So I'm here on Octopart. I'm just going to search for a QFN component. Let's take a look at something from Texas Instruments. This LM3606, let's take a look at this and take a look at its footprint. This particular component has pad settings on the bottom of the component. And you want to make sure that whatever solder mask or paste mask opening you apply matches the recommendations 
in the manufacturer data sheet so that you can make the required connections on the bottom side of the part. So here I've scrolled down to the bottom of the data sheet and we have all the mechanical information for the component. And you can see here that some of these spots on this component are defined as pins. So that's not typical, but it illustrates some of the strategies that you might have to use in order to ensure that you only apply paste mask and solder mask openings on specific layers. To do that in Ultium Designer, you would essentially just go into a footprint and you could draw out on the top solder and the top paste layer a region or a shape like a fill as I'm doing right here. So this fill that I've drawn out in the footprint this defines a paste mask opening where solder paste would be to solder deposited during assembly. So let's jump back into this component. So if I scroll down here for these pin settings, you can see here that in their recommended footprint, they actually have solder mask defined in one area and a set of vias that they recommend placing in this footprint. Then in this exposed area where you, my mouse is, you would then have a paste mask opening so that solder paste could be deposited and then this could be used in assembly. This type of uh, opening on the bottom side of this component would need to be designed manually. This is not something that you could necessarily set automatically using the tools in Altium Designer or frankly in any other program. You would basically just have to draw this out manually. Now, lucky for all you Altium users out there, you can actually find this particular component and its footprint in the manufacturer part search panel. So inside the manufacturer part search panel, you can see here I have this component already brought up. I'm gonna right click and place it. And now when we place it, you can see here very clearly what the solder mask openings are. The solder mask openings are these purple regions. And you can also see, if I just select the paste mask, what the paste mask openings are. So what they've done here is something really important. What they've done is they've left these gaps in the paste mask openings because they basically know that there's going to be a little bit of flow of solder paste around the bottom side of this component. Same thing over here for these pins on the bottom side. You can see that there are these gaps in the paste mask openings so that it allows that solder paste to flow a little bit during reflow assembly. Here, the solder mask opening is everywhere because we need to access all of that copper. Same thing over here in this region. That solder mask is defined everywhere except in the region with these vias because we need to access all of that copper for assembly. Now, if you were to then apply the solder mask expansion rule to these pads, you could, of course, again, apply that to individual pads just by selecting them and you could override the rule setting by setting something manually. So I could set an expansion or for example, a negative expansion just for this pad, just using the entry here in the properties panel. So you have full control over all of your solder mask and paste mask openings in your pads once you get the component into the PCB layout. Thanks for the great comments, everybody. It gives us the inspiration we need to do videos just like this because this is actually a very important aspect of footprint creation and taking control over all the different aspects of your PCB layout. Make sure to keep leaving comments and questions in the comment section. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And finally, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.